Hello everyone, I'm uh, JB. So this talk is about scaling APIs from 0 to 60k requests per minute. RPM is a request per minute. I'm going to use it a lot, so please uh, remember it. Uh, who in the room were, is, is handling a, a production, like uh, servers handling requests? Okay, who was here at the, at the beginning of this production, like the first days when, when you started handling your, your first requests? All right, okay, so that's the story, right? From the first days when you start with your initial server to, to the end when you have a lot of customers and more and more coming. So I'm JB, I'm CTO and co-founder of uh, Screen. I'm a security guy. Uh, prior to this, I was working in the Apple uh, Red Team doing attacks and internal Apple tools. Um, if you want to talk to me after, I've got blue shoes, uh, so I'm easy to find usually. So, what screen, how does it work? It's not uh, advertisement, it's just to, for you to understand the presentation, right? So basically, we are like sentry on New Relic, we are installed on our customer servers. So when a customer installs screen, it needs to redeploy his application for screen to, to, to just work, all right? When we are on the, on the servers of our customers, we monitor their requests for attacks, we block attackers, and uh, we provide security monitoring. So, the way it works, like when you deploy your server, our production receives a login from your servers, and then your servers send us data regularly. Okay, so we get information about attacks, things that are blocked, uh, and very, very various information. It means we don't read a lot in our database, but we write a bunch of stuff. Okay, so our production is like data intensive, right intensive. That's a legal disclaimer. The marketing department wants me to, to, to play, so please read it and raise your hand when it's done. <laughs> thanks, thanks. Okay, no, no, uh, seriously, I, I'm just, we don't have a marketing department. Um, <coughs> we have, uh, we are discussing about production outages. We, we got here, it's, it's real life, right? Uh, but we are designed in a way that our customers were not impacted. Like, uh, we are an agent inside applications, so we are able like, to keep the data for a while. Obviously, if our uh, servers or the internet goes down for uh, maybe hours or days, yeah, uh, things will, uh, will be different, but uh, usually no customers have been hurt for this presentation. Um, so, when we started, we had no customers, no product, nothing, zero requests per minute. Okay, but still, we started building the thing. How do you do this? A uh, Kubernetes cluster on uh, AWS? No, no, not, not as the first thing. It was three years ago, so Kubernetes uh, was not even a thing in production. Uh, Docker in production, not even so. Uh, so that was our uh, shiny and uh, beautiful uh, server, <laughs> right? Yeah, it was my first production, I have to, I have to admit. Uh, but I was quite proud of, uh, of it, I like it, like big Xeon. <laughs> Guys, it's, uh, it's super cool, super cool. Um, all right, then, 10 requests per minute. What does it mean? One customer. Woo! Okay, so we were a startup. We were like uh, two guys in a, in a cave, basically. Uh, and so we had free AWS credits. So yeah, let's start with AWS. Uh, you, 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 I'm not a production guy, but I knew at the time that that was like the, the direction we wanted to, to take. So, all right, let's, let's say that uh, we want to do Docker. Uh, the only way to do it in production and ECS at that, and, uh, AWS at that time was ECS. That's like uh, AWS Orchestrator. Three years ago, again, huh? no uh, Kubernetes and uh, the, the, the war was not won by, uh, by anyone. And uh, security of AWS uh, is great. Uh, and we are a security company, so we care a lot about this. And so that's, uh, that was our uh, initial uh, step. So we had like uh, six services, uh, like uh, very, few, uh, very few containers, uh, low usage, uh, low traffic. But yeah, the thing was, uh, the thing was working. Um, at that time, we needed like two instances, <laughs> 10 requests per minute, you don't need two servers. But that, here we needed two servers because one of the limitations at the time was that your containers had to uh, listen on one given port and the port was not dynamic. So if you want to deploy a new version of your service, well, uh, you cannot bind the two ports at the same moment. So you needed to shut it down, 
start the new one. So that's like service interruption, not good. So we had to have two servers. Uh, yeah, that, that was that was legacy. And that was early days of uh, of uh, ECS. Also, we were a bit uh, running on a budget at the time, right? So we had T2 instances. I don't know if it rings a bell. That's instances that are like it's free. It's the default uh, in the free tier AWS. So you don't have to pay for it if you have only one. The issue here is that. Uh, if you use too much CPU, then you have a credit that is getting down. If your credit gets to zero, then your CPU gets limited. So <laughs> the more you need CPU, the less you can have it. So it's not very suitable for a production. Uh, for a production. And we ended up running a bunch of this, and it took us a while to, to, to move to something else. Then we reach 100 RPM. OK, uh, a bit more customers. Things are, things are working. Our production still uh, holds. It's, uh, it's quite cool. But we got our first scaling issue, right? This thing is getting slow. Uh, so we spent a lot of time optimizing code and parts of screen that of our backend that were, that were slow and that we had to make faster. And at some point, you realize, mm, guys, it's uh, 2018, no, uh, 2015 at the, the time. Uh, our, our code is slow, but are we really going to rewrite parts and parts of, of our code again and again? No, no, no. We, we are a startup. We need to go fast. Uh, the price we pay for the machines, yes, it's something. But the most important for us is to develop our product and to make our customers happy. So we were OK paying a bit more on the machines, but using our uh, developer power. At that time, it was uh, Benoit here and I uh, to, to, to build more, uh, more features. So uh, we kept our focus on building the product. And yeah, we started more uh, machines. So it's, uh, it was cool. So in this way, yeah, we managed to get more and more customer requests with more machines, with code that was not perfect. But uh, yeah, uh, that's, that's life, right? But when you have more than one machine, how do you read the logs? How do you uh, monitor them? How do you get the, the, the exceptions, right? You, you, your tail uh, var log Apache uh, Access that log is not uh, is not enough anymore, right? Uh, it works with one machine, okay, but uh, with uh, like ten machines, it's, it gets harder. Not speaking of uh, thousands of machines. So yeah, that's that's the SaaS world, right? Because you have a lot of services that you can easily access that are really trivial to set up. They have a price, but again, you 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 get more time uh, for developing new features of your of your product and talking to your customers and so. So uh, we read the log with Logly, just a syslog uh, bucket somewhere. We monitor the machines uh, with New Relic. And the exceptions, we catch them with, with Sentry. That was uh, like natural uh, path. Then a bit later, uh, AWS released what they call the ALB, Application Load Balancer. So it's an evolution of their load balancer. It was a, a huge thing for us because it removed uh, the limitation we had of having only one service with a specific port binding per machine. With this, we've been able to make like smaller containers. We didn't have to uh, use the full power of uh, EC2 instance, but we've been able to reduce uh, the, 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 con the size of our containers. So we were able to have several containers per machine. It was much better for uh, scalability, uh, the, the speed of deployment, and so, so many things. Also, we've been able to enforce strict CPU limitations, so it gave us like better uh, predictability on uh, how our uh, things were, were working. And also, well, auto-scaling, that's something that you get uh, for kind of free in AWS. It's just time, but that's something that is a lifesaver because we have customers. They, these customers, they have a lot of auto-scaling as well. So it means that we need to scale depending on the number of machines of our customers. So if our customers have a big production during the day and a small production during the night, well, we will get more requests during the day. So we need to have more processing power during the day. Um, since, sorry, since our uh, production is CPU bound, well, we just have to monitor the CPU. And if the CPU of the cluster is full, well, we had new machines and the new Docker containers will be deployed to these new machines automatically. It's uh, something that we didn't have on day one when we started using ECS, and that's a service that has been added uh, like two years ago, I think. 
Then bigger, 1K RPM. Yeah, more and more customers. Cool. Um, so we are using MongoDB. I said it, I'm not a production guy uh, initially. Uh, but MongoDB is working. It's a, it's a, it's a decent database. Uh, it has a pros and cons, but actually it's no sequel. Like at the beginning of a, of a project, when you are not sure of your data models and of the, of the structures you are going to use, and even you don't know what is going to be the next feature, then MongoDB is super cool for this. But uh, as you see, uh, our initial model that was a bit naive was your API writing directly into MongoDB. Uh, obviously, you see it. If you have the slightest trouble on MongoDB, <laughs> then this thing gets crazy uh, and I like to you break your production because your database has a, has a hiccup. Not, not the best. So we deploy Q, right? So uh, instead of talking directly to the database, our servers are pushing stuff into Q, and we had digesters in the other side that, that did the job. With this model, even if the database is down, it's OK. Uh, AWS Q is filling up, like almost unlimited capacity. You just pay. And uh, your digesters are getting the stuff uh, whenever your database is back. So you can really see the, the, the impact of the, of the switch to the queues on this graph. Uh, bah, that's, a <laughs> that's a new thing to monitor, right? And uh, how do you monitor this? Well, a SaaS service, obviously. So, New Relic Insights, working quite well for this, uh, provided you write the custom code. Uh, you can see what's in your queue. Look here, we can see that we mostly digest attacks and that we have a few metrics for uh, like monitoring data. Also, we have the digestion time by customer. So you can see here, this uh, green guy here has been attacked. So we have been digesting a lot of items coming from this customer for a while. Ah, things are not always uh, happiness and, uh, and birds. Uh, Sometimes we have a production issue. So for this one, suddenly our login endpoint, so the thing that is hit by our customers, servers, when they deploy, the login endpoint was taking too much time. Our machines were not able to take it anymore. So uh, all the machines get filled with a lot of requests and the uh, request processing went to zero. No more request uh, processing uh, capability. Uh, emergency fix, that's AWS. That's the magic uh, size uh, world of the, of the SaaS. Yeah, we boot much more machines. And even if you have a terrible uh, slowdown somewhere, yeah, booting more and more machines allowed us to take the load. Obviously, we fix the code right away. We deploy it to production, but it allowed us to it allows to minimize uh, the downtime of the of this thing. And as a long-term fix, yeah, we used caching uh, not to compute in the database uh, the login payload each time. So now that's computed once, and whatever the number of servers you have, we don't hit the database anymore for uh, for getting your uh, your login payload. Good. Oh, so we're happy about it, right? We deployed our MM cache. Our uh, our production now is uh, much more uh, optimized. And so uh, Friday evening, we went uh, for uh, for a beer to celebrate. This as a, as a team, reduced uh, team at the time, but, uh, but still. And uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> obviously uh, you, you can celebrate, but uh, shit happens, right? Um, oh, come on. Yeah, so that's, that's uh, the Hopi Corner. It's a very, very nice place. They have a lot of beers. So uh, if you want to take a look, it's in the second. Um, after a couple of beers, it's, uh, it gets harder to find your, your way back to the office, but still, uh, it's okay. The office is closed, so we managed to get there. And again, Benoit not drinking any alcohol, so uh, quite uh, helpful to have a guy uh, like this as a, as a first employee. Um, so, yeah, it was like a big customer deploy, huge customer deploy. I won't tell the name, but uh, how, how could fix such uh, big guys would deploy a brand new security service a Friday evening? That was almost the same time zone, so it was also Friday evening on their, uh, on their time zone. Um, and our login endpoint was still too slow because like these guys, they were doubling the full size of our current customers. So like our production had never seen such a big customer at the time. Emergency fix, you know what we did. Yeah, we started much more machines, indeed. Um, but so, huh, how, how, do, how do we fix this? Uh, we want to know, even if we are in a bar, that we have a production issue, right? So, 
first we, we bought one more SaaS service, PagerDuty. Yeah, so now we get, we get a call uh, if uh, people get hurt. And actually, the, all people on PagerDuty are in this room at screen, right? R raise your hand, guys. Yeah. OK. Yeah, uh, you have a good uh, coverage connection, uh, cell phone connection, uh, right? Yeah. OK. Good. Uh, it's better. So we changed, in the end, our uh, agent server protocol. That's like a radical change. Uh, caching the login was, uh, was a very good step forward. But here, the login was still doing like four HTTP calls each time uh, one of our uh, customer was starting a server. So we, moved, uh, we, we changed it. And with a lot of changes and thinking, we managed to make it down to one request much better for our servers. And so like a brand new uh, deploy from uh, customers, it's divided the number of requests by four. Quite helpful here. Good, 10K RPM, more and more customers. So auto scaling, take two. Now we need to scale faster because even if we had auto scaling, this big customer uh, broke us, right? Because what happens when you auto-scale? Well, AWS needs to start a new EC2 machine. That's like VM booting, Linux VM booting. It's not, uh, it's not instantaneous. Uh, you need a couple of minutes to have it working. And provided you also do like commands at the initialization, I don't know, initializing SSH keys, uh, installing new relic or Datadog on the server or whatever, you still need some time to do it. You might use some AMIs, but you still have the time to boot the machine. You, you cannot go be beyond that. So um, first, how do we decide how to scale? Like something that is uh, faster than the CPU, use, uh, the CPU usage, it's the incoming request. So you can look directly at the load balancer, how you want to scale based on your incoming request. That's, that's the first uh, thing. Um, so it's better, but it's still too slow. So our long-term solution for this was to keep a bunch of machines doing nothing usually and that we know mimic a part of the production. And so if we have a big customer deploy, then these machines, they will be used uh, like this. And then it's OK. We will take some time to reboot more machines. But it's quite unlikely that we have twice the a huge customer connecting at the, at the same time. 40K RPM, more and more. Uh, now we cannot fail anymore, right? After, uh, if, if, if you hurt uh, like uh, a dozen uh, customers uh, because uh, you have a production down and that they cannot access their dashboard, <sighs> it's, it's bad, but it's okay. You are an early stage startup, they understand. Now we have uh, much more uh, commitment to our customers and we have more and more customers. It's okay to do 12 phone calls to your customers, say, hey, I'm the co-founder, I'm sorry, uh, we screwed up, uh, something went wrong. Wh wh when you have uh, hundreds of customers, you, you cannot, I cannot do it anymore. Uh, so now we do a lot of testing. So do you know Biz with Machine Gun? It's like a, AWS, uh, a tool using AWS that will spawn a bunch of EC2 instances and that will use them to hammer your service with requests. That's uh, working super well. It's not exactly what we need. Since we have a complex uh, protocol, we need to simulate a customer installing screen. So the way we did it, we installed a realistic web application on a, on a Docker server and we started a huge Kubernetes cluster, and that's, that's the thing that is amazing, in Google Cloud, so not AWS this time, but in Google Cloud, you can spawn like a thousand machines on a Kubernetes cluster. You can deploy a uh, thousand times 100 or 10 Docker containers on these images, and so we can simulate a huge customer connecting to screen. And doing so progressively, we have been able to see where was the, 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 the point we cannot take requests anymore, and we knew at what time we needed to, uh, to boot new and more machines. 60k RPM, that's basically our uh, state uh, today. So now, more and more customers, bigger customers, these guys uh, don't want us to fail, and so we have SLAs. SLA, you know, that's the 99.99, any number of nine you want, uh, that your customers, they do not want you to get down. So a queue and a MongoDB, yeah, that, that's not enough. So now we are moving to more and more uh, uh, data intensive and data uh, enabled like architectures, Kinesis and DynamoDB. That's like the AWS version of Kafka and Cassandra. Uh, it's what is best to improve your scaling, but also to get more resiliency when you have sudden loads. 
and uh, to lower your operational costs. We have no ops. All our uh, backend team is doing the is doing the ops and the pager duty. Uh, all right. So that's uh, that's how it looks uh, today, and that's the path we are we are taking and uh, working more and more upon. So our next challenge is it's like smoother handling on specific customers, people with huge production or huge auto scaling. Uh, we want to reduce our costs because booting more and more machines uh, on a daily basis is cool, but uh, at some point you need, to, you need to be more cost effective. We need to reduce the latency because the more and more data we get, the more and more thing we want to do with this data. So our old streaming engines, now we are telling our customers, all right, we have detected this specific attack, you want to block this specific IP. So all of this is decided in the back end. We have real time uh, processing need. And so moving forward, yes, we also need to move uh, all our detection algorithm to streams. That's all the things we are going to do to keep um, improving our load and our handling of, uh, of customers. So today, a lot of uh, requests per minute. Uh, and yeah, many, many figures. If you have any questions and we're hiring, feel free to, feel free to take a look at uh, or speak to the guys with uh, such uh, t-shirts.